Welcome again to The Harvest. I'm so excited to have you joining with us today as we continue our uh, interviews with missionaries that are doing great works for the kingdom of God throughout the world. Um, please let your folks and friends know uh, that uh, uh, you might want to reach out to them right now and have them jump on this uh, broadcast as soon as you're able to. And for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to find out some more of not only what God's doing, but just uh, maybe how we can uh, maybe be ministered to in some ways here uh, with our time together. That's what this is all about. Uh, I've really been looking forward to having this time together uh, with our uh, guest today. Um, he's a great friend who I've been able to minister with uh, down in Ecuador several years ago and just really left an impact on my life um, uh, to this day. Uh, and so, Matt Richardson, uh, it's so good to have you with us today. God bless you and thank you for joining us on The Harvest. And Pastor, thank you so much. This is a great honor and privilege to be sitting here talking with you and talking with everybody else out there that's watching today. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, right now you're not uh, in Ecuador. You're here in the States uh, for, for a ministry event, but I know that um, you have been in Ecuador for many years and you've ministered in some very interesting and challenging places. Uh, maybe share with folks that don't know who you are and what you do, uh, maybe ex explain to them who you are, you and your wife and family, and why you're down in Ecuador doing what you're doing. I've got an um, incredible wife. She's from Alabama. I grew up in upstate New York. We met in uh, Syracuse and were married in 92. I have three um, awesome kids, Carly, Sophia, and Zach. Zach is our baby at 14. Um, Carly was about 12 when we left in 2010 um, to go to Ecuador. So we've been down there for just over 10 years. And uh, just a great, great privilege. Um, it All my life, um, I was trying to step into ministry to missions full time. And God always wheeled me back, wheeled me back to the to the local church. And so we served in a local church in New York and New Mexico and Alabama for uh, 20 years. But on a missions trip in 2008, I brought down a team of uh, construction workers to Ecuador to work with one of our missionaries there to help build a roof on a um, kind of a, a girl's home, kind of a rescue home for young girls, young shore Indian girls. And during that week, um, God was, was working on me and I didn't know what was going on. Um, wherever we went around the world, I always asked, Lord, is this it? You know, Colombia, South Africa, where is it? You know, where do you want me to serve? And I wasn't asking that question that week, but um, he got a hold of me. Um, our missionary asked me at the end of the week, he said, uh, 600 Shwar villages had never heard the gospel. Will you help me? just staring right in my eyes. And wow. when he said 600, that was a number that God used to release a little boy's dream. Um, I first uh, had a seat of missions put in me and a Sunday night service in Little Fulton Assembly God Church in upstate New York when I was about seven years old. So it was over almost 40 years later <laughs> um, that uh, when he said that number, it's like this, we're supposed to be a part of this. So from that point, we sent in our application and started the process to serve as, uh, as a family um, to make sure that all 600 of those villages get to hear the gospel in their, in their native language. Yeah, so you, you call them the Shuar people. That's S-H-A-U-R, is that right? Shuar? S-H-U-A-R. U-A-R, Shuar. And so those are native to Ecuador, they're kind of like they've been there a long time and they live out in the Amazon jungle. Am I, is that accurate? I mean, describe a little bit more about who these people are and what you're doing there. They've actually been there much longer than Ecuador has been Ecuador. <laughs> yeah, they ah. were there beforehand. Um, they're, they're known for a couple of reasons. Um, one is they're, they're known as the head shrinkers of the jungle. Oh. So if you pick a, a, a ball with your fist, that's what they would do to their enemy's head. They would shrink that down and wear it around their neck as a, or put it on their spear as a trophy um, of war. Um, sometimes it, it's only to honor their ancestors as well. They would do that. Um, so they're known for that. And they're known also as being the only tribe that has never been conquered. Um, the conquistadors coming up through, um, even the tribe, even the uh, indigenous groups before that um, couldn't overtake them. They always held that land and still today they, they have their land. At, runs uh most of it is in ecuador it does run into peru um, but they're they're uh traditionally a fierce people um but a very very kind and and sweet people as well yeah and and they're really 
deeply into the Amazon jungle. Is that right? Yes, we where we are, it's called the head, headwaters of the Amazon. Um, it's where the tributaries all collect. And as they run out of the, um, the Andes Mountains in Ecuador, uh, some of that are, are actually glaciers on top of volcanoes. Mm. Uh, we have snow in, in Ecuador. That all trickles down through the jungle. Um, it's flatter and flatter and flatter where we are. And then from there, um, those rivers eventually do end up feeding into the Amazon when it gets into Peru to the Brazil border. And I got to say, the nation of Ecuador is one of the more beautiful countries that I've ever been to. Um, when we were there several years ago, we had a ministry uh, team come from our church down there and spent the week doing some vacation Bible schools in the town of Sakua. And But we also went one day to uh, a Shwar village uh, and were able to meet up with some believers there that you all had gone in to present the gospel and uh, and there was a, a there was a, a church there and we were able to enjoy some actually we did a vbs there uh and you got to keep in mind that it was just dirt paths and lush greenery and shacks and little lean-tos and just not really anything that anybody here in the united states would want to necessarily live in but well, i tell you what that there was a village there it was thriving and they loved Jesus, and they were so friendly, and they gave us uh, a nice meal, and they handed out the um, <laughs> the drink <laughs> for us to, to drink that was a little uh, challenging. Yeah, it was in a c coconut shell, I think, if I remember right, or something like that. What was it called again? Chicha. Chicha. Yeah, Chicha. Yeah, and Chicha was, uh, just for you guys that are watching here, it, my understanding is is that it was they chewed up um what's the yeah. stuff that they chewed up the yucca roots yeah yucca roots and so yucca is just this white sort of you know root and they these women i guess of the village would chew it up and then they would spit it out into a container and it would over a period of a few days or a week or so it would kind of ferment into this um Tasty stew. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll say that. You go ahead and be kind to it. I, for me, it was I was drinking someone else's spit. <laughs> someone else's spit, but it was an honor for them to serve us, and they handed uh, this coconut shell half cut out with this um, uh, chicha, and. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we didn't want to be rude, so we, we drank it, and it was, uh, it was an experience. So uh, anyway, I'll never forget it as long as I live. And, uh, uh, and it did what it was supposed to do. It, it binds you with the community. Um, yeah. That's why they offer it to you. They are offering. If they don't offer it to you, then you, you keep moving. Get right out of there because they're not welcoming you. Oh, well, they're welcoming wow. To you, they're, they're welcoming you to their village. So, yes, it is important to, to at least try it. Yeah. Um, if you don't, then you're telling them that, that you don't want to be there, and you better get out of there. <laughs> wow, wow. And, when I'm at, uh, so uh, I know that you've experienced some challenges in your ministry. Uh, I, there's a story. In fact, uh, I, I know you have a link to, um, I want to include a link right now, and you can uh, click on this link that you're viewing it, of, of, of a, that'll direct you to a story that I would love for you all to read when you have some extra time of how Matt um, had an experience one day in one of the uh, villages there where he was nearly killed probably two or three times with, in, in, that, in that one event. There were several um, moments in that um, event that he could have, should have died, uh, but the Lord just spared him and rescued him, and it was just really miraculous. Uh, it, it, all that said, um, uh, it, it's not a cakewalk as a missionary. You're not going to some place where it's just sunshine and roses and wonderful happy things happen all the time and victory after victory. There's curveballs that are thrown at you uh, in, in missions, and I'll say this, there's curveballs that are thrown in any ministry, but there's also curveballs that are thrown in in your life as you're watching this. And Matt, I, I know that you've experienced some some curveballs. You're going down the road, so to speak, in life, and things are going kind of status quo. And um, 
you know, you just kind of all of a sudden kind of get blindsided with something and then you have to adjust to it and deal with it. And uh, what do you do in those times where uh, those curveballs take place? How do you how do you respond to that? How can you speak to us about that? Well, Pastor, the, the first thing that comes to mind is it's not what you do in the moment. It's what you do before the moment happens. OK, which is so important. Um, what do you mean by you that? Uh, the day you mentioned of, of the, um, the machete attack, that was um, there's something really important that happened just before just before the the attack happened. Um, I was coming out, and I was on a, in a place that was okay to be in. I had invitation to be there. I was um, it was you know public land, I, but I I did make a mistake. I was on a bike by myself for just a short time, and in that time, um, I had some accusations made against me. Um, but before I knew any of that was happening, the I just had I took a moment, um, and I just remember so clearly just stopping and looking at some of that scenery you mentioned, just how lush and how beautiful. And the river was down the mountain, and I could hear it. I could hear the the rumble of the river. Um, birds were singing, butterflies were flying. There's beautiful clouds, blue sky. It was just magical, and I was just so taken back. I just had a moment with the Holy Spirit, and I was just so grateful. Just, just thanking God that he would allow me to be able to serve in a place like that. And, um, and just to allow me to live that little boy's dream where, you know, God put it in my heart, you know, as a seven year old kid that one day I would be able to do this. And here I was living it out and just, just had a beautiful Holy spirit, fill up kind of like hydration, kind of like down in that water bottle on a hot day. Hmm. And, uh, it was pre preparing me for what I didn't know was around the next corner. And that was a crowd of people, um, you know, with, with machetes and, Obviously made it through that and did take a couple of blows across the across the back of the head and neck and no cuts. Um, God, God gave me miracle after miracle and yeah. uh, made it out of there that day. And so that was just one little curveball. Obviously, um, life is full of mirth, isn't it? <laughs> you know, Absolutely. You don't have to be around the world. Uh, you can be right there in uh, South Carolina or the United States, wherever you're at. Um, you know, just um, just recently, you know, this is something. A lot of times, if, if you're not sure how to pray for missionary, um, pray for their kids, pray for missionary kids, because we often don't talk about that. You know, that's, you know, private, it's personal, it's our life. Um, you know, we're always thinking, you know, churches are interested in, in missions. What is ministry? What's, you know, what can, what projects are going on? What, what can they be doing for ministry? But pray for the missionaries' kids, because that's, it's, um, that is some of the hardest um things that we have to go through is how to be a parent um, in a different country and a different culture, so many barriers, language barriers, cultural barriers, um, the pull of ministry, just like, you know, it is with pastors and ministry families in the States, but, you know, there's dynamics that we, you know, are so vast in, in another culture. Um, and we've had, a, we've had to deal with our share and, you know, we're in a moment right now. Um, just over a year ago, uh, we found out that our daughter, uh, teenage daughter, was pregnant. How do you handle that? <laughs> it was uh, it was tough. It was a gut punch that um, didn't leave. Um, it would have been easy just to throw the hands up and say, "I'm I'm done. I quit." Part of you wants to do that, thinking maybe that's the best thing. Uh, but you got to keep going, one step in front of the other. Um, we can't quit, no matter where we're at, no matter what our mission is. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're a pastor there in the States, um, if you work in a grocery store, <laughs> you know, it doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, we all have a mission. Um, God's called us. We're his children and uh, we can't hold on to what he's given us. We've got to give it away. Um, so we don't quit. But how do we handle that curve? Uh, one is make sure we're hydrated with the spirit beforehand. <laughs> Try to always stay in a place where we're, we're, we're humble in his presence and he can lead us and give us what we need. Um, and be a part, be connected. I can tell you when we got that news and needed to deal with this as a family, um, yes, we needed family, but we, our family was, um, we have a great family. It's not just my three kids, my awesome wife and my, my immediate family. It's the family of, of God that came together and, and uh, we felt this love. Um, the connection I have with you, Pastor, because you took the time to come down and, and walk that jungle trail with me. 
um, we have a connection and I can talk with you in a way that I can't with a lot of people. And yeah. um, it's the body of Christ. Uh, if, if Yes, individually, we need to stay hydrated in the spirit, but we also need to make sure that we're connected with the body of Christ. Um, there, wherever you are, um, and as us as missionaries, we're a part of you, you're a part of us, and we're family together. Yeah. And that has helped us greatly um, just manage um, this walk and dealing with this curveball and we're doing okay. Um, oh, good. God has blessed us. He's, and he always takes things that, um, we look at it sometimes and like, wow, how can we find, you know, how can we find our way out of this? Or how is, how is he going to, where's this going to lead? And I don't see good out of this. We give it to him and we allow him to, to work, um, his miracles and, um, the joy we have, with our beautiful grandson is is amazing <laughs> and yeah. he's helping us the um the event that took place you said it's been about a year um uh, and you mentioned something about being patient and letting god take you through the process to the journey um you know we live in kind of an instant society right uh, instant coffee instant instant uh you know microwavable foods and uh, 30 minute sitcoms and one hour dramas on TV and two hour movies and you see these arcs from the problem to the solution kind of taking place very quickly but that's not what real life is um, real life is a, is a journey uh, and, and situations that take place like what you just described um, really take uh, us to a place of falling back into the arms of the Lord and trusting Him through the journey how has the Lord carried you all through this latest curveball what comes to mind as you're talking is stay in the boat stay in the boat okay. um it was a sermon i heard during during this past year and it was about you know the the disciples being being on the boat in the storm being scared to death not being able to see um and there jesus was in the boat uh, they didn't jump ship they stayed in the boat with him mm -hmm. they couldn't see the other shore they were going there and uh, I know right now, you know, God's got us on his journey. We're going there. There's some shores I can't see yet. It's just, you know, the, it's still tough. Yes, it's, it's a storm at times. Um, but Jesus is in the boat. And if I stay in the boat with him, we'll get to the other side. Wow. Um, but it doesn't happen in a microwave. <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, it's taking that time out. Let me tell you something that happened that just, again, came to mind just, just the other day. Sure. Um, our grandson is pretty rambunctious. Uh, eight months old, full of life. He's always moving, always going. The other morning, I, I got him early in the morning and usually have our morning time together playing and, you know, feeding him. And But he did something he's never done before. He just stopped and put his head right here on my shoulder. Yeah. And just stopped and didn't move mm. for several moments. And, and I just felt the Lord quickening me right there. It's like, this is what I want you to do with me. Mm. take that time to stop and just put your head on my shoulder that's how we hear god's heartbeat you know we're always saying you know i want heartbeat of god we want to know you know and we're always thinking about you know what can we do to do this and you know we're going to go 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 um sometimes we need to stop 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 wow yeah come away and um i learned that that morning and the lord's been reminding me that just you know you don't even have to pray you know you don't have to make it a a devotional checkoff, you know, say, I did that today. Um, it's not a religious service. It's just a stopping and, and spending time with him. Yeah. Um, just be still and know that I am God, huh? And rest in his strength. Um, that's so good, Matt. And, and that's easier said than done with all the challenges and all of the pulling in different directions of, of, of our society and of life, the responsibilities. In fact, I think the enemy probably even a lot of times uses that to put us into a place where um, we can be so busy that we don't, that we just don't take the time to spend with the Lord that we should. Um, yeah, you know, I, just this just this past Sunday, uh, I was uh, my message. I was talking about Jesus and how he um, he was uh, in in John chapter eight. He was confronted by the Pharisees in. Um, this woman that was caught in the very act of adultery and she was thrown at his feet and he, you know, 
he was confronted with what should we do with this with this woman the, the law says she should be stoned and you of course you know the story he he started drawing in the sand and and uh just kind of ignored them it seemed and finally he said let he who has no sin cast the first stone and uh you know, I'm so glad to hear your story in that um, people, your, not only your immediate family, but your Christian family uh, have supported you and surrounded you with that, that love and support. And they're modeling what Jesus did that day. In, and that's also found in Ephesians chapter 4, where it talks about how as we as believers need to be walking in kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. And that's what Jesus modeled for that lady caught in the act of adultery. And that's what people are doing for you guys, you know, through this. They're not judging you. They're not throwing stones. And I just want to say for those that are watching here today, uh, if you've been, if, 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 if life has thrown you a curveball, whether you threw it yourself or whether it was thrown at you or, you know, whatever, I mean, you're in a situation right now, whatever that looks like. And um, you're just, you kind of maybe looking for, uh, some solutions, some some anchoring, uh, some solid ground, uh, some stability, s some comfort. Uh, uh, there's a body of Christ out there. There's some precious Christians out there um, that will love you and will support you and will be kind to you. There's also some people out there that are going to throw stones and they're going to be very religious. Uh, run from those people. Uh, you don't need them. Uh, what you need is people that are going to be authentically Christ. And I'm so glad, Matt, to hear that you have experienced that uh, in in this challenging curveball in your life, but uh, uh, and also the machete attack and all of those other sort of things that you I mean you can write a book. I, I please write a book if you haven't already. I think I think we've talked about this. You need to write a book uh, from your stories. But um, I don't know as we as we kind of start getting close to wrapping this up here today. Um, I would like to ask you Matt if you might want to just encourage some of the folks that are viewing here today that might be um, dealing with a curveball they're right in the middle of it um, maybe just uh, not only speak into their lives a little bit but then at the end of it would you just lead us in prayer and uh, maybe pray for those folks uh, I know you can pray from your heart you can pray from your personal experience uh, mm -hmm. and uh, just just take a few moments to minister to the folks and then lead us in prayer if you would yeah. One thought back to that machete incident, I call it, um, you know, in that moment, there didn't seem to be any good that could have come out of that. Mm. You know, it was, you know, there were, that was meant for destruction. Um, and I can tell you that was, um, it was a while back now, it's going to be 10 years in September. Mm. And in those years since, um, I've been able to personally shake hands, uh, with, with, uh, three out of the four, uh, men who were, physically responsible for, for, uh, blows and that, um, I was able to visit in a couple of their homes, sit down and talk with them. Um, doors are opening up to them and, uh, I, I'm not hundred percent sure yet because I need to get back and, and find this out. But I heard through the grapevine that the main guy, the main perpetrator who I've never been able to talk to, um, recently got married in a, Christian church. Uh, when I heard them, like that can't be, but then I shouldn't be surprised mm. because that's our God. Yeah. So do not give up. Mm. Don't give up no matter how tough the storm, uh, how bleak it looks. Yeah. Um, you know, you may think, well, you know, I've missed messed up too much, you know, uh, too much time has gone by. I didn't do what I was supposed to do 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And, you know, that's passed me by. Um, God is a God of second chances sure. and third and fourth and fifth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, if we'll take time with him, uh, we don't have to have it all figured out. We certainly, you know, we didn't have it figured out in, in missions. You know, I'll just say this real quick. When, when our missionary said to us, you know, 600 shore villages need to hear the gospel. Will you help me? You know what my answer was? Hmm. Zero. I had no, I had no answer. I don't, I, at that point, I didn't even speak Spanish. I certainly didn't speak the native tongue of the Shwar. Wow. So how am I going to be a part of this? Yeah. What, how, how could I be a part of this? What, what could I press possibly offer? And the only thing God needed from us was the obedience to go. Um, he provided this little black box right here. 
solar panel. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Talk to, to, to uh, explain what that is to the folks. This is listen to this. Pirunyan maya Israel shuaran masite nu putkar pa pirunyan nam achirar bukier meji. No. That's the New Testament in the Shuar language. Mm. You know where I found this? Mm. In Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm. <laughs> we can't get into all those details and how that happened, but only God, only God. And he knew I, I didn't have the language. I didn't have much to offer, but just, just obedience. I took that one little step. And in Albuquerque, he opens up this door for us to have this little box. It's made by a company called Faith Comes by Hearing. I encourage you all to check that out. They're an amazing group of, of Christians that have a goal of getting the word of God translated into all 6,000 languages around the world. And you take that box that's solar powered to these different villages and they treat it like gold, right? They don't have any electronics there per se. And so that right. is a thing where they rally around and they hit that button and the gospel is being proclaimed in their language. They can't believe they're hearing their language. Yeah. They've only heard them out of another Schwab speaker's mouth. Love it. They do have their language written because of... Um, missionaries beforehand had gone through and translate it but most of them can't read their language they can only hear it so it's so vital for them to, to hear the word of god and and it has to be in their native tongue well let uh, me just stop so, you right there just for a second because i know there might be some folks that are wondering a little bit about that now how much do those boxes cost per unit uh, this is the mini one this is a small one which has been great because it's it's so much cheaper than the bigger one that we, we mm -hmm. originally had um we can get these as cheap as $25 a, a piece. Um, so if you're viewing here today and you think, you're thinking, well, what can I do to make a difference for the kingdom? Well, here's one thing you can do. You can, um, you can actually click on the link that's on our page uh, uh, on the screen right now, and that'll take you to our church homepage. And if you want to give online and say, I want to give $100 so I can get four of those proclaimers uh, sent to Ecuador so that Matt and his family could plug it in and plant it in another village. We'll be absolutely happy to be the liaison. We support Matt and Ashley every month anyway, so we'll just add whatever it is that you want to give. Just in the memo line, just say it's for the proclaimers or for, you know, the little black boxes or whatever you want to do to try to remember what, what to describe them. We'll know what you're talking about, and we can, um, you know, send some money to Matt and Ashley for them to actually – buy some more of these boxes so that the gospel can go out in these villages. Uh, but Matt, if you would, I'd love for you to pray for the folks right now uh, that are listening and maybe they've experienced some curveballs and we got just a few minutes here left. So uh, if you would, and, and when you finish with that, uh, I'd like to then pray for you uh, before we conclude here today. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Father God, first Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we have the great privilege of even calling in your name only through Jesus Christ who went to the cross for us, who came up out of that grave so that we can come up out of anything that would, would try to, to take us out, would pile down on us and, and hold us back. Lord, you came up out of that grave to give us life. Lord, we grab hold of that today, and not just for ourselves, but Lord, to spread that light, that life of Jesus Christ, Lord, around the world. Lord, I pray for those that are listening right now. They, they may think, well, I'm just not, I just don't know where to start or, or what to do. Lord, remind them that I didn't know where to start in Ecuador either, but you provided, you provided the tool of this little black box, this audio Bible, Lord, and you'll provide the tools for whatever they need, Lord God. It may be a plate of cookies to take to a neighbor across the street. It, it may be how to reach somebody, love somebody right underneath their own roof. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, we thank you that you've called each one of us to have a part. Lord, we thank you that you've made the church, Lord God. You've given us the church to be a part of, that we are a part of that, and it's life and life-giving. Lord, help us to be a part of, of the church, Lord God, that is life-giving to those. Lord, bring in your light to the darkest areas, Lord, right there in our neighborhoods and around the world. Lord, I thank you for, for this privilege, Lord God, of, of being family with my brothers and sisters today, being family. And Lord, when when things are are tough, Lord, that there's someone to reach down and, and pull us up. Um, Lord, I, I thank you for that. I thank you how you've done that in my life. You showed me that over and over and over, Lord God. When life does throw you a curveball, that you have family to back you up. And mm. Lord, help us to be that to others today, yeah. to be family, to be plugged in, to be light to each other and light to this world. Lord, we give you all the glory and praise today for that today, Lord. I just thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, amen. And Lord, we pray for Matt, Ashley, and we do pray for their three children as well. This 
the, the Richardson family as they continue to roll up their sleeves and engage in the uh, Amazon jungles uh, of, of Ecuador uh, to the Shwar village people uh, that uh, need to hear about Jesus. I pray, God, for your continued protection, uh, for your continued provision, and that you would continue to anoint him, embolden him, give him favor, opportunities, and exponentially, Lord, as those proclaimer boxes go out and continue to proclaim the gospel even after they leave those villages and go to the next one that your word continues to be proclaimed the good news continues to be proclaimed and many 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 people many souls will turn to you lord i pray that you just continue to watch over the richardson family we pray a blessing over them and we thank you lord jesus for this time that we've had here together today we ask these things lord in your precious name amen Amen. Well, Matt, I could talk with you for hours. I just so uh, enjoy uh, our time together. I hope that you'll come back and be with us again. Uh, so thank you for sharing. And uh, we're going to put a link here at the bottom of the page again one more time for you to be able to reach out to Matt if you want to uh, help out in any way, maybe with the proclaimer boxes, or maybe you want to go to Ecuador and partner with him to visit some of these villages and just kind of get out there and see what you can do to make a difference for the kingdom. I know he'd love to partner with you and and he'd show you a very good time uh i'm speaking from personal experience um well look, thank you all for for tuning in today it was so good to have you with us today share this uh broadcast with others if you will uh if it's touched your heart and if you feel like it would touch others and until the next time uh matt richardson thank you for joining us and thank you all for tuning in today we'll see you next time on the harvest bless you uh -huh.